Rumor is you killed Miss Selmy. That true? Selmy? Yeah, I killed the bitch. And her whelp, too. Shouldn't have bothered they barely had two caps between them. Hello there, my name is Misuno. Welcome back to Fallout 4. We are... Well, we are back in Sanctuary. I did a little... Everything seems to be proceeding according to plan, ma'am. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> as I say as I have a knife. Uh, my onboard functions are operating at full capacity. That's nice. Uh, slight changes. I built ourselves a little house to store the power armor. It's nothing great. Uh, I'm not going to show it off yet because it's just wood and that's it. Uh, also, I upped or I modified our rifle we got last time to the best that we can do. And we'll see how well it goes. Now, we are doing, we are breaking a cardinal sin or committing a cardinal sin by having two weapons that use the same ammo type. This uses 45 and the spray and pray. Uh oh. Oh, I don't have it listed. That's not good. That uses 45 as well. Where did you go, Spray and Pray? Hang on. Never fear, man. I will ensure your safety to the best of my ability. Uh, that shouldn't be thrown in here. Because that's still covering our backsides. There it is. That uses 45 ammo as well. Uh, spray and pray. We'll put it up top. And we have Pink, uh, Pinkman's Blade uh, because it's a little bit faster and we don't really use the axe very much. But we need to go and well, essentially go to each major area and they'll have a little cutscene about uh, the Brotherhood flying in in their giant airship. So we need to do this for a couple reasons. One, just so we can progress main quests, progress quests in general. And also there's things we need to do. One of them is the Silver Shroud quest so I can clear out his fucking shit from our inventory. And the other one is just so we can get better gear, honestly. Uh, so we need to go, first we're gonna go to Diamond City Market. Well, let's go to Diamond City, the outside per portion first, then we'll go inside. Uh, they're all basically going to have the same reaction. Oh my god, did you see that? What is that? Uh, Selling papers is busy work, lady. Hey, Nat. You can't stop the press. Okay. No? You're not going to have any... What? No hey, see that big blimp? What's the Brotherhood of Steel? Why are they here? Don't let down the home team. Buy a swatter. All right. Well, we need to do. One of the reasons we need to come, we're coming here, is we need to talk to Nick, so that we can complete the Kellogg uh, defeating come quest, on, basically. I'm just asking for your opinion. It'd be a great quote. She's my client, Piper. Why don't you learn not to snoop on a woman's private affairs? Well, well, speak of the devil. You're back. And not with your son. What happened? Hmm. Where do I begin? Where do you want me to start? The part where Kellogg turned out to be working for the Institute? Or the part where he told me they have Sean? The Institute? Oh, boy. I'm sorry, friend. Truly. That makes things considerably more complicated. He ain't kidding. Heck, Nick's a synth, and even he doesn't know how to get in. No synth does. Security protocols strip those memories out. Hmm. Oh, Mr. Metal for Hands doesn't know how to get back to the factory. No, I skipped that part of the orientation film <laughs> while they were busy pulling me apart and putting me back together again. Look, the sad thing is... I have no idea. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. 
feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night, and sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there, but to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is, or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg. Huh. Uh, read my read my mind. You read my mind. He had to have a way in and out. Yeah, but something tells me he's not gonna drop by for a chat and coffee. We can talk to him. Feel like holding a séance? <laughs> a literal dead end, huh? So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh. Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. Doesn't matter what he knew. I'd kill him again in a heartbeat. Gets yep. his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. Yep. I hope you're right, Nick. Let's see. I guess we're gonna need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Amari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads. Nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this... this thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether mm. we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can all go running across the Commonwealth, so... who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. If you want to head there together, just say so. Uh, I'm going on loan. I'll head there on my own. All right. See you at the den. Don't worry. We're gonna get your boy back. Just a few more steps. Uh, well, you two are out. I'm gonna do some more research. I'll be at the public if you need me. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's wonderful. We picked this up already, but let's pick it up again. Yes. That one worth reading? Go away. Alright. So the memory den, we've already been there once. I have to go there again. Uh, Nick is required for the next few steps. Do we have to talk to you about something? Miss Perkins. I'm glad you're here. We got a new case while you and Nick were out. Ready to put on the detective hat? Tell me more. Our client is a fisherman who lives on the edge of the Commonwealth. Kenji Nakano. Mr. Nakano didn't leave many details. Said he'd go over everything when you meet him. But if you want my guess, missing person case. Guy had a worried look a mile long. Hmm. I'll go check it out. Thanks, Ellie. The Nakano residence is up in the northeast, near the coast. A small fishing house. He said that he and his wife will be waiting for you. Alright. Uh... What quest is that? I didn't see it pop. Shadow Steel. Oh, far from home. That's uh, Far Harbor. Okay, so that we're gonna try and av avoid, probably until we get a little bit farther in the main quest, similar to the a new threat. Just because I don't want to. Well, I mean, Far Harbor is a bigger DLC than. Yeah, automata, whatever it is. Do all you outsiders wear such funny clothes? Okay, we need to. Went to there. Not. I mean, good neighbor. Let's. Well, let's see what the railroad has to say about the Brotherhood of Steel flying in. Oh, 
Here he goes. Everyone gather around. There's been panic about the new thing floating in the sky. Oh, I can't climb on it, dang. Get out of my way, Tom. <laughs> I thought it was one of Tinker Tom's aliens. Aliens are real! Enough! The blimp is called the Pridwin, and it's operated by the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood of Steel are a formidable, highly advanced order. And they've come here to destroy synths. Shit. Spread the word. The Brotherhood are our enemies. There's no possibility of peace. Tinker Tom will be spearheading a fail-safe plan to deal with this Brotherhood. Codename Red Glare. But for now, we monitor them and keep them clear of our operations. The focus remains on the Institute. You've all got jobs to do. Do them. The I'm business very good busy. neighbors concluded, right? Unless you need the my medical expertise. The extent of our operation there Please. is quite sensitive. Heads up. Tom's got more goodies in stock. Check with him. God. One at a time. God damn. And I can't wait to kill that guy. Fucking just let me. Alright, Tom. You said Glad you had good stuff. You had good stuff. Let me see what you have. Anytime, Tom. Anytime. There's more going on than you know. Trust me. Uh huh. Excuse me. You need anything? Let's take a look. I will set you up, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have actually anything of value now? No. No. You have utter trash. Great. I'm so glad you told me to come here and check him out. All right. So that, that, that. We need to go to Memory Den. Uh, which is Good Neighbor. But Good Neighbor, we also need to do... Oh. The Silver Shroud Radio. Bullshit. Uh, the reason I say it's bullshit is because it's just... It's not really... It's interesting the first time you do it, but it gets old very, very quickly. Uh, so, what we do is you just go to the radio. Galaxy! No! Calling all Silver Shroud fans. A once-in-a-lifetime announcement. The Silver Shroud returns and he's gonna clean up the streets. Everyone heard how Wayne Delancey murdered Miss Selmy and her kid over a few lousy caps. Death is coming for you, Wayne. All right. So we got our first target. Galaxy News Radio. We're going to turn that off because it plays the old uh, serials of the Silver Shroud, which is kind of nice, but it's also kind of... Can't believe it. He looked just like Sammy, too. He sure as hell didn't act like him. Institute thinks they can replace people with synths in this town? They got another thing coming. <sighs> what am I going to tell his mother? That's stealing. Let's do a quick save. Let's see if we can do this. You my target? Wayne Delancey, huh? Hi. Step away from my meat, little girl. Unless you want to be next. Hmm. Rumor is you killed Miss Selmy. That true? Selmy? Yeah, I killed the bitch. And her whelp, too. Shouldn't have bothered. They barely had two caps between them. Hmm. You listen to the radio? Someone wants you dead. You threatening me? Are you threatening me? That's your last mistake, asshole. You mess with me, <laughs> you're dead. Nope. 
wasn't exactly elegant, but it wasn't meant to be. Uh, we'll take that. Do you have anything of value? No. But we're going to leave our calling card. Because we need to do that so they know who was here. Oh, that's right. If we wear the shroud c costume, I think we get special dialogue. Radio, there it is. Galaxy. Friend of the show, Jerry, is here. Is this thing on? Hello? Hello? It's on. We're recording in here. Aw, oh, man. Great. Great, great. The Silver Shroud's dispatched justice already. Miss Selmy has been avenged. Shit, the Shroud off Wayne? Wait, so this guy's actually for real? Oh, you better believe it. So, Jerry, go on. Tell the listeners about what we're talking about. Right, so AJ, you know the chem dealer by Bobby's. He's doing good for himself. Says he's got a whole new market. Kids. Even with his garbage chems, he's just raking in the caps. You hear that? Sounds like the Silver Shroud has another bad guy to deal with. Uh, why? This Shroud guy, he's gonna muscle in on the chem trade? No. He's gonna do something about it. AJ's selling the kids. And his chems have k killed people. And? I don't get it. Can't let AJ kill kids. Very, very true. Whatever. <laughs> I like that. Go whatever. We ain't the only Galaxy friend of AJ. News. Oh. Radio. Go away. You follow? Hey, look at the clown. This is my turf, clown. And I don't appreciate what you call them trespasses. Peddling poison to kids, are we? Today you face the Silver Shroud! Uh, <laughs> who you say? Oh, for Christ's sake. Did Kent put you up to this? He keeps moaning about the poor little kids. What the hell, right? Tell you what. I'll pay you, let's say, 50 caps just to shut up about it. And, uh, maybe get Kent off my back, all right? For 50 caps. No way. All right, fine. Make it 75. No, I just want Allows the XP. You 25 caps more? You trying to insult me? Hey, 75 is a gift. All right, fine. I give you 90 if you just leave me in goddamn peace. Now, we're going to try and intimidate. Probably going to fail, but You don't understand. How much are you willing to pay to keep breathing, pal? You! Shaking me down. Uh -huh. That's what I figured. I'm getting... I'm stuck on somebody. Okay. Yeah, we were stuck on somebody, unfortunately. Uh, aid, we're gonna pop a stim pack. Pop a secondary one. There we go. Fuck out of my... Oh, that's the wrong button. Where's my shotgun? Fuck you. Fuck you. No, you don't. Yeah, the silver sh silver shroud's armor has no protection in it, and we don't have enough uh, damage dealing ability with the melee. So we're gonna have to go silver with. Shroud. Justice to good neighbor. You 
bad guys better look out. And now, a special update. The villainous assassin Kendra was recently spotted at the third rail. The same Kendra who bombed Little Joe Shack and killed four innocent drifters. If you want to see the Silver Shroud in action, stay near Whitechapel Charlie. The Shroud's sure to interrogate him to find the evildoer's whereabouts. <sighs> All right. All right, well, you get the gist of what this series of missions is. Or arc. Excuse me, that'd be probably better language. Uh, so that's basically... He gives us, a, I think, like four or five more of these to go do that stuff. And it's, it's fine. It's not great. You get some XP from it, but it's just a bunch of, Hey, go here, kill this guy. Go here, kill this guy. And that's basically it. Uh, I'm going to do the rest of it off screen. Well, well. Unless something Mr. really Valentine, interesting happens. I thought you had forgotten about the Lomi. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Hello. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Yeah, so you keep saying. And now this door's magically open. Dr. Amari? Yes. Wait, I remember you. H222's contact. Ooh, Rob Go Fun. Yes. Our... Yay, cool. I think I skipped that before. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, I need to talk with you. Uh, let Nick explain. This one's all yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp. Kellogg is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Uh... Sarcastic. Technically, the corpse was defiled already. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Could you say that like Dr. Frankenstein? Igor, fetch me the brain! <laughs> no, I will not. Oh, now, come on. Do you have it? Here you go. Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Uh... Nick's an older model synth. Is he still compatible? That's exactly what I was thinking. If we are lucky, it should hook right in. But even if this works, Mr. Valentine would be taking on a tremendous amount of risk. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. Let's do it. Mm. We should try plugging you into a toaster next. Mm. Fresh toast. Uh, it's nice to know that even when I'm about to have a foreign object shoved into my noggin, you find new horrible ways to laugh at my expense. Whenever you're ready, <laughs> Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. Just gonna shove. I need Whoop. you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I. I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Mm hmm, of course there is. Is Nick gonna be okay? Yes, the connections appear to be stable. Hopefully it'll be as simple as unplugging the implant once we're done. But that doesn't get around the current problem. The memory encryption is too strong for a single mind. 
But what if we used to? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. All right. So uh, this is well, if you've played Fallout, F uh, Fallout 4, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, this is essentially like a proto brain dance. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here. But this is also one of the least entertaining sections because it's all. Spoiler alert. Exposition. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. Alright, so this, you don't actually have to follow her story. There. You can this just... This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Essentially run straight through this and you just have to follow this path. Ooh, big loading lag. Remember, you are experiencing these memories as so you can just go. This may prove disorienting at first. I'm trying to sleep. So all the grognet caught. Uh, Mm. What a joke. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. What's it mean, Mom? Yeah. Nothing, Connie. Abusive this family. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. Uh, they're trying to make Kellogg a sy sympathetic character, but... Close to you in temporal sequence. Eh. There. So there's Kellogg. Who's Sarah? I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. All right, so he had a daughter. Uh, something tells me he's going to lose her because, of course, he is. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. All right, so it sounds like he... I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Ah, so his work got his wife and daughter killed. And then he... Uh, exacted his pound of flesh from them. Mind if we 
sit down? Suit yourself. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, <laughs> we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? Mm. So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Alright, so he becomes a mercenary. Or a more vicious merc mercenary. More efficient. Mr. Kellogg. I'm glad you decided to meet with me. Oh. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. I mean, those sense. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, there's one that looks mostly intact. Mm -hmm. Connecting now. Those sense you could have sneezed on and they would have fucking died. Those were the weakest ones because they had no armor on them. I mean, we could have punched them with a the bare hand or bare fist and. Oh, this is it. And they would have destroyed Manual them. Override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. Hey, it's all us. computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully, it's all just find it. He's already dead. Pod C six down the hall near the end. Doesn't even know it. Uh, what do you have to say about this? I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh, I never liked to. But it was better this way. Better than taking his kid and leaving him alive. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving her alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft pre-war vault dweller even if she somehow got thought out at least i know those institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them too if she could take me out they won't be able to hide from her for long hmm cool So we get to see this animation play from a different angle this time. This is the one. Here. Open it. Why were we thawed <laughs> as well? Is it okay? Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Okay? Come here. No. Come here, baby. Wait. No. I got him! Let the boy go. I'm only gonna tell you once. I'm not giving you son! God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, 
I'm sorry you had to go through that again. Nah, it's I okay. found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Up. Nope. That's our main objective. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory. So, good news, I think. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. Mm. Piper has really done it this time. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying she's right, but... Mayor... Oh, Alright, so we just gotta wait for something to happen, which will happen in a second, so... There we go. Kellogg. It's okay. One of these days, you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the Coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Wow. Some heads are going to roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. Alright, so... I'm assuming Killer killed this guy. Excuse me. Otherwise, we got some before he found Virgil. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. What? Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Uh, okay, that's how we exit. Also, these little books are the skill books you can... F ah! Fuck me. Uh, <laughs> are the ones you can find around, around the world. I didn't expect them to pop back in. Slow movements, okay? I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? Oh, sarcastic. Next time I have to watch someone's life story, I want popcorn. Well, if you're cognizant enough to joke, I think we can safely say that you're out of critical condition. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? Uh, I think we have to do all this. Or most of it, so... There's more than one person who knows about the Institute. Virgil, that scientist who escaped. I didn't know Institute scientists could defect. This changes everything. He could answer all sorts of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That can't be right. No one would risk going there. 
Not even to hide. Mm, well, I mean, well, let's. I know why. Because the glowing sea sucks, but. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new. But the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation in the glowing sea like a shield or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. Mm. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds. Radax, Radaway. You'd need as much as you could carry. Maybe more. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. Or maybe one of those suits of power armor? That would be perfect. Oh, I'm going in naked. Fingers crossed I get superpowers. I know you're joking, <laughs> but as a doctor, I feel obligated to remind you that unprotected radioactive exposure will only kill you. Dead. D-E-A-D. -E so be sure you find a way to get through there with your life intact. And good luck. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Remove the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Alright. So the glowing sea is incredibly dangerous. Not because of the, the radiation, but because of all the creatures in there. The radiation just slowly fills your health up. And will eventually kill you if you don't keep it in check, but... It's not going to kill you within seconds. Like maybe a minute or two and then you'll die. There's an upstairs. Did we come up here before? Yeah, this is Irma or whatever her name's. Alright. Uh, Nick, 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 Nick. Where are you, buddy? Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. You want to try for round two, huh? Let's go. What? What are you talking about? Hmm. Wait. Are you just playing a joke on me? Uh, I guess that's for you to wonder and for me and Kellogg's memories to know for sure. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Uh, I'm gonna go alone. I'm gonna head out on my own from here, Nick. Good luck out there. You know where to find me. Thanks, Nick. We should head over to the Nakano residence when we can. Find out what their case is about. That's a missing persons. Ellie already filled us in on that. Oh, Nick, go away. Whoever this brotherhood of steel is, I'm not buying that. We come in peace, Malarkey. <laughs> Good on you, actually, for not falling for that. Steel. Better stay out of good neighbor. Well, if the Brotherhood of Steel want this place, you can't stop them. They have power armor. You don't. Yes. All right. Well, I think we'll leave it here for this episode, and we'll pick it back up next time when we... We're not going to go to the Glowing Sea yet. There's too much to do. Uh, I think we'll... We'll go to the Brotherhood, see what they want, and see if they have any solutions for the Glowing Sea. Uh, if not, then I think we'll tackle the Automaton DLC because that doesn't require us to go out into the Glowing Sea or anything like that. Plus, it's kind of a self-contained DLC. And then we can head on out. Uh, but that's going to be next time. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Uh, Till next time. Bye-bye.